morning, good morning. It is your boy Jake Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is June 1st, day 152 of our time together, reading the Bible through in chronicle, chronicle, chronological order out of the World English Bible Translation. That is a royalty-free well, it is, a, it is a public domain, modern English translation of the Holy Bible. That means you may freely copy it in any form, including electronic and print formats or audio format. The World English Bible is based on the American Standard Version of the Holy Bible, first published in 1901. I've butchered that date countless times, but that's, that's, that's what it is, 1901. The Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensa Old Testament and the Greek Majority Text New Testament. It is in draft form and currently being edited for accuracy and readability. And we are in Proverbs. We are in Proverbs. We are reading 17.1 through 19.29. So 17.18 and 19 is what we're reading today. And we, why are we in Proverbs right now? Well, we started with, sorry, if you're just first joining us, welcome. If you're joining us again. (laughs) Welcome back. I know I'm a mess. It's been a minute. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Chronological order. Yeah. Bible. Okay. So we started in Genesis, then went to Job, then Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, first and second Samuel, first Kings. All throughout that time that, or, or throughout those, our readings, we've sprinkled in Psalms and First Chronicles. We got to the end of First Kings. We were reading about Solomon's wisdom. And as we read about Solomon's wisdom in the Bible, we started to read about the wisdom that Solomon recorded. And that is what got us into the Proverbs. So let me start with 17.1. Better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. A servant who deals wisely will rule over a son who causes shame and shall have a part in the inheritance among the brothers. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but Yahweh tests the hearts and you will be tested. You will be tested. There's no doubt about it. Your heart will be tested. You will go through the furnace. You will be placed in the refining pot and you will go through testing. An evildoer heeds wicked lips. A liar gives ear to a mischievous tongue. Whoever mocks the poor reproaches his maker. He who is glad at calamity shall not be unpunished. Children's children are the crown of old men. The glory of children are their parents. Excellent speech isn't fitting for a fool, much less do lying lips fit a prince. A bribe is a precious stone in the eyes of him who gives it. Wherever he turns, he prospers. He who covers an offense promotes love, but he who repeats a matter separates best friends. Rebuke enters deeper into one who has understanding than a hundred lashes into a fool. An evil man seeks only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her cubs meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. Whoever rewards evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is like breaching a dam. Therefore, stop contention before quarreling breaks out. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous, both of them alike are an abomination to Yahweh. Why is there money in the hand of a fool to buy wisdom since he has no understanding? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding strikes hands and becomes collateral in the presence of his neighbor. He who loves disobedience loves strife. One who builds a high gate seeks destruction. One who has a perverse heart doesn't find prosperity. And one who has a deceitful tongue falls into trouble. He who becomes the father of a fool grieves. The father of a fool has no joy. A cheerful heart makes good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. A wicked man receives a bribe in secret to pervert the ways of justice. 
Wisdom is before the face of one who has understanding, but the eyes of a fool wander to the ends of the earth. A foolish son brings grief to his mother and, a bitter, and bitterness to her who bore him. Also, to punish the righteous is not good, nor to flog officials for their integrity. He who spares his words has knowledge. He who is even-tempered is a man of understanding. Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is counted wise. When he shuts his lips, he is thought to be discerning. All right, just real, just real quick here. A cheerful heart makes good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. It's like what we talk about this in other Proverbs and Psalms, I think. But it's like what sustains you during times of difficulty, times of trouble? Isn't it hope? It's hope. It is hope. The thought that more, more better, more better is on the way. More better is on the way. And I think that's right because that's what sustained the Lord Jesus Christ during his suffering. Not hope for creature comforts on this earth, but hope for the inheritance that he was purchasing and in the age to come or to receive that inheritance in the age to come. The people, his bride, the church, the body of believers that he was purchasing for his own glory. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. But when you lose hope, it's hard to pick it back up. It's hard to keep going. It's hard to battle through. So this part is interesting as well. Also to punish the righteous is not good. And it's like, what? when does that happen? When do we, do? I don't do that. I don't do that. I'm just going to skip it. Nor to flog officials for their integrity. Okay, you probably haven't done that. But the, to punish the righteous, think of it this way. We must be more intentional about rewarding the behavior we want to see. If you are in a leadership position over children, family, work, friends, whatever it is, whatever it is, reward the behavior you want to see. Praise the behavior you want to see. Sometimes we get on people for doing the right thing. We get on them. We get on them. And then they come and then they say to themselves, well, I'm not doing that again. Because nothing can make this dude happy. Nothing can make this person happy. And then lastly, even a fool, when he keeps silent, is counted wise. When he shuts his lips, he is thought to be discerning. Instead of opening his mouth and removing all doubt, right? So silence is, is, is a good option frequently. Sometimes you need to speak up. But mm, a lot of times, silence is a good option. All right, Proverbs 18, verse 1. A man who isolates himself pursues selfishness and defies all sound judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but only in revealing his own opinion. That right there. Like, um, you've heard it said, maybe you haven't, but maybe you've heard it said that you, when you speak to someone, you treat them as if they have something that you could learn from that would be of benefit to you. And instead of just saying, oh, this idiot again, tuning them out, you actually listen as if they have something that could help you and benefit you. And that only comes through intentionality, I think. You have to be intentional about doing that. This has to be intentional, for, especially for those of us who love to talk a lot. Don't be the fool. But only, yeah. Uh, a fool has no delight in understanding, but only in revealing his own opinion. When wickedness comes, contempt also comes, and with shame comes disgrace. The words of a man's mouth are like deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is like a flowing brook. To be partial to the faces of the wicked is not good, nor to deprive the innocent of justice. A fool's lips come into strife, and his mouth invites beatings. And things he says gets him in trouble. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are a snare to his soul. The words of a gossip are like dainty morsels. They go down into a person's innermost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to him who is a master of destruction. Yahweh's name is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and are safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, like an unscalable wall in his own imagination. Before destruction, the heart of man is proud but before honor is humility. He who answers before he hears, that is folly and shame to him. 
A man's spirit will sustain him in sickness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? The heart of the discerning gets knowledge. The ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. He who pleads his cause first seems right, until another comes and questions him. The lot settles disputes and keeps strong ones apart. So what is that, the lot? They used to, yeah, throwing lots, throwing lots. So a random, uh, <coughs> a random selection, random selection. A brother offended is more difficult than a fortified city. Disputes are like the bars of a fortress. A man's stomach is filled with the fruit of his mouth. With the harvest of his lips, he is satisfied. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Whoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of Yahweh. The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. A man of many companions may be ruined, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. That friend, of course, is the wise son of Proverbs, is the Lord Jesus Christ, is the one whose righteousness we need, who has performed all things well and all things perfectly. This one right here gets me, though. Whoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of Yahweh. But Lord, you don't know my wife. Yes, he does. But Lord, you don't. Yeah. How is this a proverb? So obviously you, there's <clears throat> maybe there's instances, right? It's a general truism. We talked about that before a general truism. It's generally true. How is it generally true that when you find a wife, you find a good thing and that is favor, just the nature, the nature of the relationship itself. Now we could go on for, I think we could go on for a long time about that. The nature of the relationship itself is good one it's not good for man to be alone and god has provided a suitable helper for you but you don't want that help typically is what it comes down to and then also women make men self-conscious and show them their weaknesses show them where they don't meet up don't meet the standard make you vulnerable I think you can say that. So the nature of those two things um, or three things being a helper, <laughs> discomfort, vulnerability, where, where you don't meet up quite right, right? Where you're not enough, where you're not really man enough. Those reminders, those things come out of this relationship. Generally speaking, generally speaking, that's why it's kind of a, a, a truism. So when you find a wife, one, you receive your helpmate. Two, you're shown where you don't meet up. And three, you, you're kind of, you're kept in check because you continue to feel vulnerable. Kind of like, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen the rugby show on Amazon. Maybe you haven't, and that's all right. But the head coach, they're, they're talking about, he has some success for this, this New Zealand All Blacks. So it's a, like a season with the New Zealand All Blacks. It's the national rugby team. And the, the coach is, is talking about, uh, I can't remember his name, coach, New Zealand All Blacks. He's not the current coach. He's the previous go Steve Hansen. Steve Hansen. And so he's talking about the nature of, of his uh, relationship with his wife. And he says something like, at home, I'm just plain old Steve. Something like that. <laughs> so she keeps him humble by making sure that he's just plain old Steve. So that's like the nature of the relationship. Um, I think the nature of the relationship itself does, does, does a lot of that. Keeps you humble. Keeps you, uh, is beneficial Sorry, I'm going to keep going on here. Proverbs 19, 1. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than he who is perverse in his lips and is a fool. It isn't good to have zeal without knowledge, nor being hasty with one's feet and missing the way. 
The foolishness of man subverts his way. His heart rages against Yahweh. Wealth adds many friends, but the poor is separated from his friend. A false witness shall not be unpunished. He who pours out lies shall not go free. Many will entreat the favor of a ruler, and everyone is a friend to a man who gives gifts. All the relatives of the poor shun him. How much more do his friends avoid him? He pursues them with pleas, but they are gone. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished. He who utters lies shall perish. Delicate living is not appropriate for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger. It is his glory to overlook an offense. The king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish son is the calamity of his father. A wife's quarrels are a continual dripping. House and riches are an inheritance from fathers, but a prudent wife is from Yahweh. It is interesting because we just talked about that, right? How a wife is a general truism here. A wife is a blessing from God, a gift from God. And then here, a wife's quarrels are a continual dripping. So when it's not, it is not. When it is, it is. Right? When the nature of that relationship is correct, it is good. But when it's not, it's not. All right. Slothfulness casts into a deep sleep. The idle soul shall suffer hunger. He who keeps the commandment keeps his soul, but he who is contemptuous of his, in his ways shall die. He who has pity on the poor lends to Yahweh. He will reward him. Discipline your son, for there is hope. Don't be a willing party to his death. A hot-tempered man must pay the penalty, for if you rescue him, you must do it again. Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter end. There are many plans in a man's heart, but Yahweh's counsel will prevail. That which makes a man to be desired is his kindness. A poor man is better than a liar. The fear of Yahweh leads to life, then contentment. He rests and will not be touched by trouble. The sluggard buries his hands in the dish. He will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Flog a scoffer, and the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke one who has understanding, and he will gain knowledge. He who robs his father and drives away his mother is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. If you stop listening to instruction, my son, you will stray from the words of knowledge. A corrupt witness mocks justice, and the mouth of the wicked gulps down iniquity. Penalties are prepared for scoffers, and beatings for the backs of fools. All right, not too bad, not too bad. We're at 18, about 18 minutes here. And that is the end of our reading today. I'm going to pray for Kurt and Karen Cole today. Kurt serves as the International Personal Personnel Director for Avant, overseeing the ministry health of 500-plus global missionaries. His primary task is to build church planning teams that are deployed to least-reached areas. He does this through actively engaging, mentoring, and coaching people who are pursuing missionary service with Avant. Karen is an encourager and coach as well, especially with young missionary mothers. Kurt and Karen are based in Kansas City, Missouri. Avant. What's up with Avant? Who reaching the unreached since the 1980s? Avant Ministries is an interdenominational, multinational missionary sending organization that is focused on planting and developing churches in the unreached areas of the world since the 19 uh, since the 1890s. Sorry, Avant defines unreached as places where less than two percent of the population is evangelical Christian. More than 2 billion people still need to hear the gospel. Avant trains, sends, and serves missionaries in 50 countries globally. All right. So what are we praying for? Kurt and Karen Cole. Uh, all right. All right. Sorry. Kurt and Karen Cole specifically, what do they want? Okay. They want prayers as they travel to Panama this month. For Avant's Latin America missionary gathering to get to know and encourage dozens of Avant's missionaries and their kids. Kurt's new right knee after surgery in March, which is getting better. I think we prayed for him in March. I want to say we prayed for him in March. 
with this knee surgery. So, okay, if you're driving, please keep your eyes open, pay attention to the road in front of you. If you are not, then by all means, close your eyes, um, bow the knees, whatever you want to do. You can take whatever posture you desire, and we will pray together. If you have prayer requests, not many noble at gmail.com, or you just want to reach out and say, what's up? You can do that as well. Let's pray. Father, thank you for answering our prayers for Kurt's knee, and I pray that you would please continue to heal and strengthen it, that he would be able to have more movement, more mobility to get around, less pain, less discomfort, that he would be able to move and work without constantly thinking about it. Also pray for Kurt and Karen that you would knit their hearts together in love and unity, submission, honor, respect, diligence, and communicating, and that their marriage would be a picture, a good picture of Christ and his church that type of sacrificial love, that type of um, submission, or that they would honor one another, love each other, fulfill the vows that they made the day that they were married to the end. Also pray for Avant and for their um, Latin America missionary gathering, that you would bring Kurt and Karen there safely and the rest of the missionaries and workers that are meeting to determine what they do and kind of strike out their uh, their, their future are planted out. Pray that you would please give them wisdom on what to do, where to go, how to do it, how to pursue it, how that that's going to work out. That you would please bless their efforts and that you would send forth the gospel to the ends of the earth. And that you would use Avant, and you would use Kurt and Karen, and you would use their missionaries to do so. And that specifically from this gathering, much fruit would come. That they would be encouraged. The missionaries that, that show up would be encouraged. Their kids would be strengthened. Their relationships would be um, strengthened and knit together more and that they would be emboldened to send forth the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Thank you for everything. Thank you for uh, listening and of course, as always, show notes are at notmanynoble.com and you can uh, get a hold of me at notmanynoble at gmail.com. I will catch you 